here to tell you about the sixth Victorian book that I have read this year, and that is Moonfleet by J. Mead Faulkner. Uh, this is a children's adventure story, and I think some people compare it to Treasure Island with good reason. There are uh, ships and traveling and um, suspicious characters, and it's got the real kind of coastal feel, although most of it does take place on land, but very close to the water. Um, so much less time actually out at sea, like in Treasure Island. Um, and you are following the adventures of John Trenchard, who is a young man and um, <clears throat> not really well to do, a little bit kind of, uh, I don't know, he's not a real um, influential member of his community and um, he is left upon the mercies of his aunt. And uh, I, I don't think she's very hugely fond of him. Um, she seems a bit uh, not, not taken with him. Um, and in this town, uh, which is a really small town, um, right by Moonfleet Bay, there is a legend of Blackbeard. And that Blackbeard at one point was in this community um, and people claim to see him sometimes, um, you know, the ghost of Blackbeard at night. Um, so I love the, uh, the, how intertwined folklore and story was with this community. You could tell that the town was so swept up, um, by this story, um, and how it had affected their small community. Uh, and then eventually, John is thrown in the path of some smugglers. And, um, it, it, this is one that, once things start, um, they really start. So it starts off pretty quaint um, about the village of Moonfleet and there is the Why Not, which is the pub. Um, and I love that it's called the Why Not. Um, and it's a real hub for the community. And Elsevier Block is the man who runs this pub and he and John Trenchard um, end up having this um, unbreakable bond. Uh, through the adventure that they go on together. And it all hinges on the smugglers that are part of the community and one night that changes everything when John and Elsevier are made to look like they committed a crime that they did not do. And then there is also a rumor of treasure hidden somewhere nearby. And so John and Elsevier leave the community and they try to go find this treasure. Then beautifully interwoven with this is a love story uh, where Grace is the name of the young lady that John is in love with. Um, and he feels like they are star-crossed now that his name has been um, besmirched. Is that the right word? I don't know that I've ever used that word, but <laughs> I think that's I think that's right. Um, and I uh, I loved this story. It was just so um, all encompassing as you're reading it. It is very breakneck speed though. So you really have to be ready for a very fast paced story. Although there were some lulls, there are times, uh, I, I can't really give it away, but there are times when John has to wait around. Um, and so those are kind of the quieter moments, but it's interesting because he has a lot of inner dialogue and is reflecting on his circumstances and how he feels about how his life is going, how he feels about um, the, the circumstances of his life and how he's been treated, how he's viewed by the community. Um, so there is also, you know, a hunt for treasure involved in this. And um, there is a really uh, kind of telling phrase when uh, John is chasing after this treasure and uh, they say, uh, someone tells him, have a care, um, you know, the treasure is cursed. So basically um, kind of uh, that this desire for treasure, the happiness will be fleeting from it. You know, you think once you have this, you're going to be as happy as you were hoping that you would be in this life. And um, I just love that, have a care. Um, that really uh, just kind of, uh, sh uh, what do I want to say? It's just a really um, good cautionary thing to tell a young man who is chasing after riches. And I loved the bond between John and Elsevier Block um, in this story. I thought it was really beautiful. And at first I thought he was going to be kind of a um, Long John Silver type character, but he was, it was night and day. Um, and he really came to care about John Char Trenchard. And um, I really like the notion though of having kind of more of a loose canon like Long John Silver, but this is a different story. It is his own thing. This story feels a bit more sincere. It feels very heartfelt. Whereas Treasure Island, 
I don't know, it just has this real electric kind of feel to it. So I love, they, they have their own unique feel to them. What I wasn't prepared for and did kind of um, uh, hinder my enjoyment towards the end is that there is some real sadness and ache at the end. And I wasn't expecting or anticipating that. I don't know what I thought was going to happen, but sort of how the events unfold towards the end, I, I remember thinking, no, 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 as John is making different decisions. But that means that I was very invested in the story, just really willing John to make any other decision than the one that I knew he was about to make. And then the thing that really elevated this reading experience is <clears throat> an album called Moonfleet and Other Stories by a Welsh music musician, Chris de Berg. So thank you so much to the commenter who told me about this album. When I put Moonfleet on my Victober five star TBR, um, they told me about this album. I would not, I don't know that I would have found it otherwise. So I am forever grateful because this was such a lovely experience to listen to this. And it's basically like Moonfleet, the musical. John, uh, Christopher loves Moonfleet. It's one of his favorite books. And so he wrote an entire musical album dedicated to it. And what I really loved is it's like getting a, it, it's the ultimate five-star book review. You see all of the um, elements that he pulls out of the book that he loves. And so it was a really enriching experience to read the book first and then follow it up with listening to this. First of all, it's beautiful. It's so, and now I have one of the songs is just, it's on repeat in my head um, and I want to go listen to it again. Uh, but it's so professionally done. So it's high quality. That's already going to heighten the experience. But I love that he um, interspersed some narration passages. And so um, he has this big sweeping uh, Moonfleet overture that the album opens up with. And then following that, he has um, the opening narration, you know, the village of Moonfleet. And there's this very um, haunting, ominous, atmospheric music that is so fitting for it. And um, there are songs then following the plot and interspersed are the narration tracks, um, kind of telling you more of what has happened in the story. And so these elements that he pulls out, uh, I thought, you know, oh, I didn't think about that enough, or I didn't appreciate that enough as I was reading. And so just seeing what a, even more what a marvelous book this is. Um, I think it didn't quite wow me as, as much as um, I was hoping it would. I think I've given it four stars and I might change it to five stars. It was in my five star prediction. So, um, I might do that, but this is one that I will definitely be rereading as well. And it's one I'm excited to reread when Peter is older. It's lovely to read children's books, or even then when your children are a lot older, uh, just read adult literature and know that you can share this uh, with your kids later on. Uh, so yes, just this was a, a very fun reading experience. I did listen to it as an audiobook. I'm really happy with the narration. It was my first uh, uh, narration by this uh, narrator. And um, yes, so I can't recommend enough uh, Moon, Moonfleet and Other Stories by Krista Berg. Uh, one of the songs is so beautiful and moving. Uh, so yeah, just a really lovely kind of, um, I don't know what, multifaceted reading experience. Um, and now I'm really, now that I'm talking about it, I'm realizing, yeah, it was just a really good book. So I'm excited to return to it. Uh, and I hope you all have enjoyed hearing about it. And I will be back with another video soon um, telling you actually about Victorian book number seven. So we're up to seven. Um, this is the last week of March when I'm filming this. I don't think I'll finish. I'm, I have 150 pages left of The Perpetual Curate by Margaret Oliphant, which I wasn't intending on that one being the one I worked on next. But since the Kindle format, that's just what was calling to me. So we'll see if I finish it by the end of March. If not, it's fine. I will finish it in April. Um, thank you as always for watching and joining me on this journey um, through 25 Victorian books this year. And I will be back with another video soon.